Good afternoon and welcome to this week's Community Viewpoint. As always, I'm your host, John Pollock. We've invited Travis Brown, manager of his family's date farm, we know and love as the China Ranch. Hi, Travis. Hi, John. Travis is the son of Brian Brown, whose vision, along with his wife, Bonnie, created this wonderful oasis in the California desert just west of our town. You may have read in our PV Times or have seen on the news that the ranch has suffered what may have been a potentially devastating fire this past week. This can be attributed to the ongoing drought and more importantly, uh, the use of fireworks. I've asked Travis to give us his personal views on what actually transpired during not just one, but two fires uh, that consumed approximately 30 acres of the, the date ranch. So Travis, what the heck happened? Oh boy. <laughs> it's so been, it's it was fireworks. Quite right? a week, John. Yes. Um, the first fire started uh, last Friday night around, let's say, 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we actually heard the fireworks going off from our house. And we knew there were, had been some people camping up there. And, um, you know, everyone, everyone I was with kind of looked at me and we all said, What the heck are they doing? It's too windy for that. Mm -hmm. Way too windy. About five minutes later, this car comes rushing down to my place, and they, they get out, and they're screaming, fire, fire, start banging on the door, and, you know, I got in the car, immediately rushed up there to check it out, and by the time I had got there, it was already huge. It was way more than I could handle, um, so we needed a fire truck immediately. I raced back down, dialed 911, and then, you know, we just waited on the local fire department to arrive um, as everyone kind of prepped to evacuate. And the first fire consumed about roughly five acres. And uh, the Southern Inyo County Volunteer Fire Department and I actually were able to hold it back for, for most of the night. And they had the thing contained. Uh -huh. um, so that was, we thought it was over then. <laughs> And then about three days later, uh, on Tuesday in the afternoon, some embers blew over across the road and ignited the other patch of greenery, which was much more devastating. It was, you know, maybe five times bigger than the previous fire. Well, we, let's let's yeah. let's show the whole area that you're talking about. Well, this is the this is the fire area. This is a video of it. This is what transpired in the, the fire, and that's your little uh, pond there. That's the pond. <laughs> yes. So that's the extent of the fire. So there's a lot of, oh, thanks for doing it again. There's a lot of area that's um, uh, land for the, the small critters and stuff uh, that live in the area. So they're going to be without uh, uh, yeah. a living area. So a lot of that is actually crucial uh, bird habitat, uh, and there's some endangered species that nest there, and, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been destroyed by reckless fireworks. And who was this? Was this a, a reckless person, or was it someone that... Uh, we, know, we know who the person is, and they've, they've confessed, and that's going to be taken care of. I, I don't want to say his name on air, but... Is this somebody from Perum? No, it was not a local. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so yeah, you'll have to deal with that uh, yourself. But the sheriff out there knows? The sheriff knows, and there will be consequences. Yes. But it's unfortunate it had to happen at all. Oh, definitely. So you can see how important it is not to have fireworks uh, this year, because it's not going to get any better, because we're in a, as they're saying, a 20-year drought, and it's just getting worse instead of, instead of better. And 4th of July is going to be coming up. Mm -hmm. So we all have to be uh, vigilant. So we had mutual uh, aid. Also, we had uh, uh, Scott Lewis made it out there from uh, with our fire department. Oh, they yeah, they did show up for a bit to scope it out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Those were here. <laughs> Hopefully, they didn't come out for a day check. <laughs> so we had some pictures of the the fire. Also, if we want to brought the, uh, bring that up. I believe in the second fire, they actually did come out and they were quite helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know Scott, so he, yeah, I know he did a good job if he came down there. That's your, your irrigation over the, uh, the, the aluminum pipes, mm -hmm. and they don't look too well. 
No, our, our irrigation system uh, took on some pretty serious damage. Uh, some of the pipes actually melted, uh, melted the aluminum, and then uh, we also had just a lot of patching in areas that those places melted, so we have big holes in the pipe. All of the rubber seals in between each section melted, um, so we, we have to replace a lot of pipe. And currently, you know, the trees are just sitting there not getting watered. Um, the sooner we can repair that, the better it will be for the farm. So how do we, how do you, you rectify that? Do you have seals for that? Yeah, we have some seals. We you know we need to purchase more parts and just repair it as soon as possible. We, we're already working on some of it, but the site is a little bit hot in areas. We can't even get in there and do some of the work till the coals and embers you know die down. So the fire is completely struck now, though, isn't it? I'm hoping the fire is is being maintained. It's it's very much an active situation still. It's we're not even three days out from the, this last one where, um, I guess today would be the third day. Uh -huh. So, you know, the, on the third day, the last time, that that's when the bigger fire happened. So every, everything is still really hot. We're going up there and maintaining it um, every night. And the BLM is handling it at the, at the moment. Okay. They have guys there monitoring the situation. But they, they say it could go on for weeks. Really? Oh, geez. And it's supposed to get windy this weekend, too. Yeah. yeah, we're we're open, but it's it's an active fire site, so you know we don't want the public going up to that area, but you oh, can natural. still come down and enjoy the trails. So everything else is open as far as the store and uh, the trails going the other way. Currently, yes, and we had to close for one day while they took care of the fire, but they they gave us the green light to reopen and. We'll, we'll be open unless they, they say otherwise or if it's too unsafe to, to be running the place. So your, your normal hours are what, 9 to 5? 9 to 5 every day. Every day except uh, two days ago Christmas and Christmas. And, yeah. and, and emergency situations. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's a good, no, I'm sorry, it's a good time to go down there too because the weather is perfect, if not for the fire. I, yeah, I would do it soon because it's, it's heating up. Yes. The bombers will be back. Oh yeah, the, a lot of these people don't know about the bombers until they go down there. Yes. You guys don't have them in Pahrump. You're so well, lucky. Yeah, we have a few of them. Not when we have horses, we have horses. Uh -oh. We have an occasional one that gets uh, that might comes be up us. in a car. It could be the people from Tacopa bringing, bringing them, up, them up and you know Here, letting them go loose away. in the Home Depot parking lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Brian, was it Donnelly? Oh, yes, Patrick. Patrick Donnelly. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's he's been very vocal on uh, Facebook, and he's he's told us about the uh, GoFundMe campaign. Also, we do have a GoFundMe that he started. Um, it originally was five thousand. Now he he's upped it for ten thousand mm -hmm. uh, because of the um, the things that you have to replace. It was five at the first fire, and then after the second one, he's upped it, and I think we just broke ten thousand. So it's been very. Very heartwarming to see the support that's come out of. Yeah, once the you community. go down there, yeah, you you love the China Ranch. I've been down there many times. I've spent, I've camped out there. Uh, the sum of all fears. That movie was. Uh, you remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of things that happen down there that are just wonderful, and for us to lose something uh, like the China Ranch for something like a fireworks uh, mishap, it it just uh, it, it, it floors me. It's, yeah. Uh, it's a real tragedy. So yes. we're, we're still processing the whole thing. It's very new for us. You know? <laughs> and your, your father's home is uh, intact. It was safe. That, the, all of the structures and the, orchard, uh, the orchards are intact. and So we didn't lose any, any of the field. But it's kind of at the edge of the fire break. So if, if the wind carries another, and we have another one, you know, that, that's the next section to go. So we're just praying it doesn't happen and we're staying vigilant about monitoring that area. Um, but but for, as for now, it's just the irrigation system that took on a lot of damage. Right, and you've got, uh, you're working on that as we, as we speak. As soon as we can, yeah. Yeah, and I appreciate you coming up to explain some of these things to us so we know uh, what has happened down there and the, that you're open and we can go down there and enjoy what we always enjoy when we come down there. Um, 
you have uh, also a very lucrative, I think, uh, uh, mail order online order. I know when I order from you. It's been pretty good, yeah. COVID actually, yeah, our, our mail order just went through the roof during COVID. So. Yeah, you guys um, fill the order the same day and it's, it's there like two days later. That's mostly my girlfriend doing <laughs> all of the mail. Yeah. She's, so if she's I trapped can't, in that room doing mail. <laughs> so if I can't make it down there, I just order the, like, the date bread, which is the, the dye for the cookies, and I want the white chocolate always. I mentioned that. Yeah, that we, we bake to order everyone, so <laughs> they'll, they'll go out the same day they were baked. Yeah. So if you go online, it's ChinaRanch. Uh, ChinaRanch.com. It's re real easy to remember. And what's your number down there, your phone number? Um, Get a pen, 760-852-4415. Yes, I remember that too, <laughs> yes. So it's, it's a wonderful place to visit, and uh, hopefully it'll be there forever. Uh, I've seen it grow, grow uh, with, with your, your, your mom and your dad. I've been there for many years to see uh, it come to where it is right now, where, what you have right now, and it just, it's a wonderful place. Uh, thank you for sharing it with, with all of us, and hopefully uh, we'll have many more years of enjoying the, uh, uh, the date farm down there. We have the, the Amargosa Trail, or the, the, the Amargosa Trail. Amargosa Trail. And there's a, um, an area that's shaded over there, and there's a kiosk, and it just tells you everything you know about uh, the trails down there. In our last minute, uh, do you have anything else you want to bring up? I just want to thank everybody who's helped us so far with, you know, the fire, the Southern Inyo County Volunteer Fire Department, especially. It was just awesome. Um, five volunteers, you know, it, it's amazing. The, the, they, the they people down there, yeah, they, they don't have they much They saved to... the place from the first yeah. fire. Yeah. I've known those folks for many, many years. They're, they're just... Uh... And they, they've saved a lot of lives and uh, two of them are retired <laughs> yeah one of the guys is like 70 years old he was out there just <laughs> oh a youngster you know running I'm 71 and, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, but I want to thank you for stopping by taking the time to uh, talk to us and uh, please visit the China Ranch uh, visit it before it gets too hot and uh, thank you thank you and we'll see you next week bye bye thanks John